Hello and welcome to Talking Bible Vlog. Um, today I'm going to be reading out for you an analysis of Matthew chapter 13. And this was originally posted on November the 13th, um, 2011 on um, Talking Bible Vlog. Dot com. Um, I am Tussin, by the way. <laughs> okay, so firstly, I'm going to read out for you um, Matthew um, chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 from the Open Bible. And the Open Bible is um, a free and um, accessible translation of the New Testament, which um, I am translating, and it's made available uh, at Tussin's Bible blog .com, um, and it's um, available for you to download free and to use freely. It's um, very, very free of copyright restrictions. So I encourage you to check it out. Yeah? Okay, so Matthew 13, verse 24. He shared another parable with them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man sowing good seed in his field. Verse 25. While everyone else was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the grain and left. Verse 26. When the grain had grown and was bringing fruit, the tares also appeared. Verse 27. His slaves came to the master of the house and said to him, Lord, did you not sow good seed into your field? Where then have these tares come from? Verse 28. He said to them, An enemy has done this. His slaves then asked him, Master, do you wish that we should go to gather them up? He said, No, in case you accidentally uproot the grain while you are gathering up the tear. The 30. Allow both to grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, Gather first the tares and tie them into bundles to be thrown into the fire then gather the grain into my barn. Okay, so that was the Bible reading. Um, now looking at the analysis, um, this parable concerns something that I personally find so frustrating, the idea of false Christians. So what happened here is that a man planted a genuine crop of wheat. However, while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and planted tares within the wheat. Now, apparently, tares are a weed that look very similar to wheat. So while the wheat was growing up, up sprung the tares as well. Um, the man recognized that this had to be the work of his enemy. However, he instructs his workers that they should not pull up the tares in case they accidentally uproot the real wheat at the same time. Later on in this passage, Jesus, Jesus spells it out for us that the wheat represents genuine Christians, but the tares represent false Christians, actually sons of the devil, planted by the devil. So Jesus promises us, um, that is, it's not like a positive promise, but he's just saying, okay, this is what is going to happen. That even amongst genuine genuine Christians, there will be some false um, Christians, in inverted commas, who are not really Christians, um, who have actually been planted by the devil. And frankly speaking, um, as a Christian, by the grace of God, as a genuine Christian, I see so many tears. Um, there, are a long, there is a long list of supposed tele-evangelists who claim to speak for Christ and for his good news, the gospel, but who never actually preach anything related to the Bible in the slightest. Okay, and what can be really frustrating is that then these people put others off from the true faith of Christ. I mean, the fact is that the true faith of Christ is not necessarily um, easy or very glamorous. So the truth itself can actually be quite off-putting um, itself, but at least it's the truth, yeah? Um, all these false preachers will come and then they'll preach false messages to divert, to mislead, or to confuse 
true followers of Christ. And frankly speaking, it makes me so angry. And my natural inclination would be to aggressively pull out those chairs. However, um, Christ tells us that this is not his way. Um, what does this mean in practice? Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what that does mean. Um, some Christians or pastors maintain blogs where they critique, they criticize, sometimes very, very damningly, um, other Christian leaders according to their, to their doctrine. Um, and I myself have done this on this blog before, um, and I have, have been so tempted um, to do it. In fact, I've done it quite recently <laughs> on Tottenham Survival Vlog, um, and I may well do it again. Um, the truth is, I'm not... Um, some people say, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, but then I think when people are leading others astray, you know, then in a way we may have the responsibility to to demonstrate what is of God and what is not. But that said, I know that there are ways of doing it, and that is always the problem. It can be quite easy to respond in anger, which is not of Christ. I mean, Jesus tells us that we are to be ruled by love at all times, even when we are, you know, um, pointing out someone's error or whatever. Um, that should be done in love, and I know that that would be my main issue, that it would be the anger within me that is speaking, which is not of Christ, okay? Um, and the question is, does this count as pulling out the tears? Um, and, you know, before I initially wrote this um, um, blog post, I may have said, yes, that, you know, that is what we're not supposed to do, that's pulling out the tears. But then um, on reading the story more closely, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe it doesn't count as pulling out the tears. Um, what is clear um, before we start is that as Christians, we have to maintain good and excellent doctrine. Um, and the supremacy of the Word of God, the Bible, cannot be allowed to be questioned, especially by the people who are supposed to be defending it. We have to give God his place of being number one. And we have to elevate the Bible as the one reliable, unchanging, fixed medium by which we can accurately assess who God is and what he's calling us to do. Okay? Um, I definitely do not believe in cultivating a ministry to pull other ministers down um, or other people who claim to speak for Christ. But I do feel that blatant corruptions of the Word of God have to be challenged and corrected. Um, on reading this passage, it states that the reapers are the angels. They are the ones asking whether they should uproot the tares. It is, in my view, as if this passage is explaining why God allows these people to carry to carry on spreading their lies against him and against his truth. So it's not as if Jesus is using this passage to tell us why we should not uproot the tares, but rather it might be that he's explaining why God does not uproot them or why God does not send his um his angels or his ministers to uproot the tares. Um on the other hand, that said, I guess if the angels have to be careful about accidentally uprooting um, true sons of God, um, we also have to be careful when challenging false ministries um, so that people who are genuinely of faith, but perhaps not as rooted as we are, um, do not get uprooted from their faith by our actions. Yeah? So um, on one hand, yes, um, I would say, okay, we have to be really, really careful about the Word of God. We have to challenge um, lies when we see them. But then we have to do that in a really, really, really careful and prayerful way um, so that real Christians um, do not get thrown off from the way of Christ. You know, otherwise, if 
for instance, um, react to anger or through retaliation or whatever, then people can be damaged. Um, and their faith, their trust in Christ can be damaged. Yeah? Okay. So if you're not a Christian, but you are considering whether the faith of Christ might be the truth, it definitely is. Yeah? But please remember to not look at um, anyone who claims to speak for God. You know, anyone at all. Please do not look at me. I am a human being. You know, I am imperfect. You know, I, you know, have weaknesses like everyone else. Don't look at me. Look at Jesus. You know, look at the Bible. Yeah? So anyone else that you look at might also be um, um, simply human like I am. Or they might be experiencing moments of weakness like we all do. Or they might actually be tears, you know, which would be that they're not even Christians to start off with. Yeah? So please look to the Bible, look to God himself, um, you know, look to everything that he has called us to do in the Bible, because this is the only reliable way of finding out who God is, really, um, and he's ready to answer you at any time of the day or night, um, yeah, I have tried, like, oh, that is one of the great things uh, of about having a relationship with God, being able to speak to him literally at any time, yeah, um, he can be totally trusted, um, and he never turns anyone away, yeah, so yeah, I, I encourage you, to put your hope in Christ, put your hope in God, he's totally worth it, yeah, okay, so thank you very much for watching, this is um, com. thank you very much, and bye for now, bye.